Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 63 of Be With Me. Here's the title. Wait, you want me to re-uterus? We have to give this guy, Nicodemus, some credit as the Lord reveals to him that you must be born again and not born again in the same way you were before, but in a different way. Let's listen to the story. You got to listen with fresh ear. He doesn't know what's going on. Let's approach it with the same idea. This is John chapter 3, verse 1. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night. Remember, he's the night guy. And he's known as the night guy. And said to him, Rabbi, number one, we know you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Verse 3, Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So he comes at night. We talked about that uh, last episode. Uh, And then today he addresses Jesus as rabbi. That's nice. So teacher, respectful title. And then he says, we know that you are a teacher come from God. So he's saying, you have the stamp of divinity or eternity upon you in a special way. And how do I know that? Because you do these signs. So this is an Old Testament thing, is that when God gave signs, it was a a stamp of, of the divinity on that person. For example, Moses. Moses wasn't divine. Elijah wasn't divine. But both of them did things that were extraordinary on the earth, and their, their words were, were buoyed by their actions. And that's the, exactly the purpose of the signs, is to point to something. Now, Nicodemus kind of gets this wrong in that he, th- he, th- he thinks that the signs are pointing to God, which I suppose is not a, a totally unreasonable conclusion. But the crazy thing that he's trying to get his head around is the signs don't point to God as they point actually to Jesus, to him. So the signs are intended for belief. He's got that right. They do recognize the divinity. He's got that right. And they're pointing to something. He's got that wrong just yet. All right. So here's the revelation. The the revelation he gives this, this poor guy, Nicodemus, is that you have to be born again. Now, birth is a miracle. Think about regular physical birth. If you've been out of a physical human female birth, then you will know that it is the closest thing to seeing heaven open on this planet that there is. It is the most otherworldly thing that we have on our earth today. And so it's not a surprise that Jesus references this because I think it's as close as we get to heaven on this earth right now. If you don't weep and are moved at a birth and are, if you are not undone at a birth and I don't think you're paying attention, that's my judgment upon you. All right. First, Verse 4, Nicodemus says, how can this be? How can a man be born, number one, when he is old? Let's talk about that for a second. So I never caught this before. I I think Nicodemus is referring to himself as old. I suppose anybody that pops out of a uterus is, is uterus old after about five minutes. But he's old enough to be a Pharisee. He's old enough to be a Sanhedrin. He's old enough to have been faithful in one direction, in study and in in leadership, and, and that he is recognized as uh, as this leader person. So I, my point is, it probably took a, a while. So his question, when he says, "Can we enter a second time after I'm old?" Let's look at that for a second. He says, "Can we enter a second time into my mother's room, womb, and then be born again?" So he gets two out of those three things wrong. One, that it's a physical birth. One, that the location of it is inside your mother's womb. And thirdly, that it's a, a birth. So he gets the birth part right in his question, but he gets two, two-thirds of it wrong. So I want to talk about water 
uh, Jesus says, unless uh, it, unless one is born of water and the Spirit. So let's talk about the water so far. What do we know about water? Well, first of all, Nicodemus lives in Jerusalem. Bethany is where G- John preached. And just and remember back in uh, Luke chapter 3, John just didn't talk about wa- about water and do baptism. He, he talked about bearing fruits and keeping with repentance. And the people were responding in a way of people were in expectation and questioning in their hearts concerning the things that John said and John himself. So there was spiritual activity happening along with what John was, was doing. And this thing that that John eventually did, which was baptize people after they repented. Think about what has to happen before repentance. You have to, you have to say, I could be wrong about this. I am done disagreeing with God. I'm done with my stupid thought that I'm okay. And I don't need God. This whole agreeing, that is a spiritual thing. So to move someone from the I'm fine square to the I'm a sinner square, or I could be wrong and I need a savior square. That is a spiritual activity, and I mean spirit, I mean with a capital S, the Holy Spirit. So spiritual birth, I think, is is similar to water birth here. I think they're both indicating the same thing. All right, so how about us? The birth of the Spirit. Oh, Lord, do your work in me in the hard things. Move me to the square of repentance, whether it's my first time, second, 300, 3,000th 3, time. Help me to both be born in you, and if I've already done that, then walk in you and keep in step and with you and dance with you. Help me to cooperate with you. Help me not to be confused about entering the uterus a second time, but to have spiritual birth, spiritual birth, God's activity. It's an imperative. There's no plan B. Let me enter enter the kingdom like this. I thank you for being here. I thank you for standing in confusion with Nicodemus. It's like, wait, you want me to re-uterus? And Jesus says, no, I want you to be born of the Spirit. I want you to be born of repentance. I want the Holy Spirit to be in you, and that will be as close to a physical birth as we have. Thanks for listening. I'll see you guys tomorrow.